Well, we're going to talk about a very exciting topic today, food additives. I was told once by someone that I get very intense about this topic, <laughs> so uh, I have a lot of passion for it, and I hope I'm as exciting as Penny said today. So how many of you came last week to my, my talk about naturopathic medicine? Anybody come to that? Okay, so a few of you guys. So when we're talking about food additives, so only three of you guys were here, but I talked about naturopathic medicine and the different therapeutic order we take to treatment. And the first step we always take is removing what we call obstacles to cure. And sometimes, and of course that includes toxicities. And I have a lot of passion for food additives because when it comes to removing toxicities, what we put in our mouth, we have pretty much complete control over most of the time. You know, of course, in some instances we don't, you know, military, people and institutions, <clears throat> things like that don't always have control over what they eat. But for the most part, we do. So I have a lot of passion for this. This topic, I became really interested in this, and I'll just do a brief little bleb on that. On that. When I was an undergrad in, in college at Louisiana State University, I was really into biochemistry and nutrition, of course. And for one of my electives, I took a food chemistry course. And it was, it was a grad course, and because Louisiana State University produces a whole lot of food chemists there. And so I took a food chemistry course. It ended up being the hardest course in my college career, but it was by far the most interesting and the most applicable course, meaning everything I learned in organic chemistry and chemistry really made sense and was applied to my life. And it was so fascinating. We actually got to make a lot of the synthetic dyes, and we got to make a lot of the synthetic flavors, and we got to taste them. And we actually also got to make um, aspartame, which was extremely interesting. And as I was doing it, you know, knowing about, I didn't know quite as much about health then, but I knew about biochemistry. And, you know, I was just like, wow, this seems like these would be quite toxic, you know, if you ingest them over the course of time. So that's kind of where my interest began, and then I got into naturopathic medicine and, you know, so forth. So we're going to have a lot of information today that hopefully you guys can take home with you and pass it along to all your loved ones and, you know, sell them on the Internet or whatever. So <laughs> what is on the agenda? This is kind of what we're going to talk about so you know ahead of time. The definition of food additives, you know, what are they? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll talk about that. The main functions of additives, like all the different categories, basically, of food additives the, and the common types. We're going to talk about the 14 most dangerous additives to remove from your diet. I started with 12, but then I had to add two more. And I think on one slide it says 13, but it's just because I didn't edit it very well. So I'm sorry about that, and I will change that. And there's a couple more editing things that I'll have you do as we go along. I'll make sure you change it on your PowerPoint, okay? And then we'll talk, and that's the most important part I want to get across is the 14 most dangerous. And I, I do have a lot of passion for it, and I get pretty intense when I talk about it, but by no means do I want to scare anybody or, you know, um, think everyone's going to get cancer just because you eat them. I just want you to go home with some great information and so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. And you'll also see another handout there, and I'll talk more about that one. It's kind of, um, well, I'll tell you more about what that is. It's called my Super Walmart OK List. <laughs> it's not the most professional document, but it's something I did for my patients a few years ago back in North Carolina, and I'll, and I'll tell you more about that, OK? All right, so let's get started. So food additives are exactly that. They're, they are substances that are added to food, OK? Mainly to make food more aesthetic, so for the aesthetic purposes, so that we buy them and we want to eat them. So to change the flavor, the texture, the color, you know, anytime you process foods and you're not eating fresh, all of that changes. And so the companies have to add things back in so, you know, we want to buy their product, okay? And then also, there are important reasons why some additives are in the food, of course. You know, if you are going to eat processed foods, you, you do want some bit of preservatives and things in there, antioxidants. And uh, we're going to go through it and talk about each one. But there are over 3,000 additives in the grocery store now. So the average grocery store you walk in, you will see an, 
anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 additives total on their shelves. And that's also including topicals, okay, deodorants, things like that. Now, additive, food additives is not a new idea. We've been using additives as humans since prehistoric times. But I think the main thing to point out is that the purpose of additives has changed. Why did we use additives hundreds of years ago? Can anybody tell me for the main purpose? Why? Why did we want to preserve them? Because they will destroy, it will rot, it will... Right. But the, but the bigger picture of why we wanted to preserve things was for, well, for survival, for survival, you know, because back in the day, you know, we didn't have access to food. We couldn't grow things year round. We didn't have trucks transporting food and, you know, refrigeration. Yeah, we did not have refrigeration. We did not have a whole lot of things. So we preserved foods Salting, saltine foods, smoking meats, curing meats, pickling, you know, cucumbers and sauerkraut, you know, are two pickled foods that preserve them. And then also, you know, we got into canning and, and making jellies and, you know, jelly before was really just to, a way to preserve the fruit, not necessarily for a spread for your, you know, bread to use year round. Just a real quick point, there's direct additives and indirect additives, and direct additives are the ones you know more about, so colors, sweeteners, preservatives that are directly added to the food for a reason. Indirect additives are ones that get, become a part of the food because of either manufacturing, transporting, storage, things like that. So for instance, let's take the Twinkie, you know, you have to, they use machines to put that filling or whatever in the middle, right? And so normally there's a lubricant in the machine that helps push so the filling doesn't stick to the machines and that will become, that will get into, into the product. A lot of things, a lot of times like, uh, I don't mention this one, but um, pro, uh, propylene glycol is used readily. So you'll see antifreeze, which is ethylene glycol, but propylene glycol is like ethylene glycol is, is an anti, anti, antifreeze that's used in machinery. So you'll see that in food products, and you'll see it on the label sometimes. And it's, uh, it's in a lot of diabetic foods. Go figure, but. Um, all right, artificial and natural. So artificial, synthetically made in a lab. Natural, it's coming from something natural, whether it's an animal or a plant or a stone or something on the, of this earth, so, okay. All right, so the main functions, um, product consistency, preserve the nutrient value or improve. Most processed foods are stripped of all nutrients, so they have to fortify them, okay? And the fortification process and the vitamins used are not the natural form and they're not the most absorbable. So not the best way to get your nutrients from all fortified foods, okay? And control the acidity, alkalinity, making sure microbes don't grow, and provide color enhanced flavor. So we talked a lot about that already. All right, here are the common types, the top common types. So you got your colors, your emulsifiers, <laughs> flavorings, gelling agents, preservatives, sweeteners, anti-caking agents, okay? And we're gonna talk about each, what all these are. Antioxidants and acidulants, okay? So colors. All right, all right, just to change, you know, no one wants to go, up, well, cultural anthropologists tell us and, you know, market, marketing tell us that we're going to buy stuff that's more appeasing to us, right? No one wants to go buy fruit punch that's not red or orange crush that's not orange, apparently, or lemon lime Gatorade that's not green, right? So now companies are, are learning about these colors and they've, they've gone to measures of uh, taking the colors out but making sure the label color covers the whole bottle. So they use green labels, so you're still looking at it as being green, okay? So, you know, marketing is a huge field and it's really in the food industry because everyone has to eat. All right, so there's colors, there's natural colors, uh, nature identical colors and synthetic colors, okay? Natural colors just means that they're coming from something natural, so there can be grasses, fruit skins, roots, seeds. One that you'll see very often is anatto, A-N-A-T-T-O, and you see that really often in cheese. It comes from a tree somewhere in the tropics, 
okay, is where they get that from. So that's considered a natural color. And a lot of times they come from insects. Insects is a big one, especially with red colorings, um, carminic acid, coach, cochineal, I don't know if I say that right, but um, carmine, you'll see that in a whole lot of products, especially makeup. It's all in makeup, okay? And it has its own issues, but we're not gonna really talk about that one today. Nature identical means we've found out the, the chemical structure of that natural color and we've now made that natural color in a lab. So it's not coming from the natural substance, but now we're making it in a lab, okay? And then synthetic, okay? That's your, which we'll talk about, red number 40, you know, yellow six. You've probably seen that somewhere on a label if you've ever read a label before. Okay, we're gonna talk about those. All right, so emulsifiers, right? Emulsifiers bind oil and water together, right? So you know how salad dressings don't mix, oil and vinegar. Bile is your own natural emulsifier, kind of, okay? So this is what mayonnaise looks like without an emulsifier. So if you make it at home, no emulsifier, it's because you use it right away and you just re-whip it. Has anybody made homemade mayonnaise? If you make it one time, you'll never go back to the old stuff. It's really good. But you would not buy mayonnaise probably if it looked like this, would you? Okay, so they add emulsifiers to that. Flavorings, you got natural flavorings and artificial flavorings. So like vanilla, for instance, a lot of people don't know the difference between pure vanilla and imitation vanilla. Imitation is synthetic, okay? It's not from the vanilla bean, and it tastes terrible in my opinion. Did you just say that? Oh, the imitation? Really? Chocolate chip cookies with real vanilla is way better, in my opinion. But. <laughs> when my Mrs. Fields chocolate chip cookies I make, it's real vanilla. It's the only, only thing. But anyway, so those are the different flavors on the tongue. I just kind of put that up there. Bitter, sour, salty, sweet. Very important to the food chemists and the food industry. It's appealing to those tastes in your brain and how you, how you interpret the way a food tastes. Okay? All right, so a real point here is a synthetic flavor can be a combination of, of up to 50 compounds, okay? And I'm gonna show you something here. So here's raspberries, all right? So if you get like a raspberry popsicle or a raspberry drink, there's probably not any raspberries in there. <laughs> so a lot of people think there is, but they put synthetic or they'll put raspberry flavor on a label or lemon flavor. Now that's not from lemons or it's not from raspberries. This is kind of an example of what raspberry flavoring is, okay? It's a combination of like, I don't know how many compounds, but that makes it taste like raspberry, okay? Mm -hmm. To the brain, you think it's raspberry, so that's an example. Gelling agents, okay, jello, gelling agents will give structure to um, a substance. <laughs> So this is really in so many things, okay? They're not necessarily toxic, but you'll see these in a lot of foods, everything from Jello to salad dressings to, you know, Nutrigrain bars, you know, that little jelly stuff in the middle, uh, soy milk, carrageenan, um, I can't ever say that one. I can never pronounce that word right. Um, is in soy milk and almond milk, things like that. They're gonna have gelling agents in there, unless you make it at home then you probably wouldn't use it. All right, so pectins, guire gum, you've probably seen that. Gelatin is also in supplements, is in medication. It's in a whole lot of things, okay? <clears throat> so there's different ways to preserve, canning, freezing, drying, you know, beef jerky is a way to preserve, pickling, we talked a little bit about that already. And then you have your chemical preservatives, which are used in foods and lotions and basically, anything you put on your body. So most of them are fungistatic, meaning they prevent yeast and algae and, and fungus from growing mold, and they have bacterial properties as well, okay? These are very important, especially with canning, you know, to prevent salmonellosis and botulism and things, other bacteria that can grow, okay? <coughs> All right, so sweeteners is actually an additive. Sugar, sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, natural sweeteners are considered a food additive. They're added to foods. Okay, this is your sucrose, your table sugar, high fructose corn syrup, things that are added. Of course you have natural sugars and fruits and things like that, but those are not your added, added sweeteners, okay? 
All right, so they do a lot of things. They just, they stimulate <coughs> your, your taste buds, make you addicted to the food and all that stuff. You have anti-caking agents, all right? So what are those? They prevent a product from caking together. So you'll see these in pow a lot of powdered products, everything from salt to your, and I put a lot of pictures up here, so hopefully that helps you kind of know what these things are in. Um, Duncan Hines, Betty Crocker mixes. Now, if you make cake at home, you will not put these in there because you make it and you bake it right away. This, these things sit on the shelf for sometimes years at a time, and if you don't put anti-caking agents such as silicon dioxide is one that you see very often, it will cake together, and then you'll have to uncake it, and people won't be happy and they won't buy the product, okay? And it's in a whole lot of um, seasonings. Okay, but the thing is you can buy, you just got to read labels, and I've given you a list of some okay brands somewhere on your table in front of you. Not all companies use these, so you can make better options, even at Super Walmart, okay? All right, antioxidants, all right, everyone's heard of antioxidants before. Take your antioxidants. Antioxidants are also used on food to prevent browning. So I'm sure everyone has had their mom put lemon juice on their cut up apples once upon a time. I've actually used vitamin C powder on my kids because that's what I have at home and didn't have lemon juice because vitamin C powder will do it because it's the vitamin C in the lemon that's causing it from not browning. That's why. So, so I've just figured, hey, put the powder on. That's a good way to get their vitamin C in too. So that's what antioxidants do. Here are some of the synthetic ones that are used that you may have seen on labels, and we're going to talk about a few of those in just a minute, okay? Okay, the safety of these food additives. This is very important. A lot of these additives, especially the ones I'm going to talk to you today, are actually under investigation by the FDA, and there's a whole lot of politics that goes into a lot of this, which I'm not going to get into, but not many of these have been really tested for the long-term use. They've dosed rats up with high amounts of these things in the short term to see if they grow tumors and cancers and things like that, and that's kind of how we get our data. And a lot of these do cause cancer growth in animals, and we'll talk about that. These studies have not been done on humans or about the long intake. So 20, 30, 40, 50 years of taking these things in has not been tested, as well as the combination of additives together has not been tested. Also, it's not been tested with the combination with medications, all right? So just like medications, these synthetic additives are chemicals, and they are absorbed into the bloodstream, and they will affect your biochemistry. They will bind where they're supposed to bind and make you like the food or whatever it's supposed to do. We're going to talk a lot about that in a minute but they do act just like medications would for the most part, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk about the 14 most dangerous food additives. I have 13 up there, and it's only because I made Splenda its own little one, okay? So you can change that, but that's irrelevant. But we're gonna go through each of these 13 ones, talk to you about what they are, why they're considered dangerous, and why you should avoid them, and they're easy, it just takes a little bit of education. You can avoid all of these. And I'll give you some examples of what they're in, okay? All right, sodium nitrate, nitrites, okay? I'm sh has everyone heard about this? Yes, okay. So these are mainly in your sandwich meats, okay? Your processed meats, any processed meat, okay? Bacon, hot dogs, bologna, all of the foods kids love, right? And what nitrates do is just preserving the color and the flavor of the food. Have you ever looked at the meat? Kind of, I, I have, but you, you see like this little green tint and you're like, hmm, what is this green thing? That's the nitrates, okay? That's the green tint. So it, stay, makes it, it keeps it that red color, basically, is what nitrates do. The good thing is that we know that they cause a lot of health problems in people and that these companies now are making nitrate-free meats. Okay, they're adding more salt to them to help preserve them, but they are nitrate free. Nitrates make nitrosamines in the body, okay? That's the big thing that we're worried about. Also really charcoaling your meat, like if you eat a steak well, well, well done, that'll make nitrosamines as well, okay? So that's just a little 
for your information. But Hormel and Oscar Mayer both have their own nitrate-free line, okay? And you can buy nitrate-free hot dogs, bacon, <coughs> and sandwich meat. All right, BHA and BHT. All right, so that's your butylated hydroxy anisole and your butylated hydroxytoluene. All right, those are antioxidants that are added to the food to help preserve the fat, to keep it from growing rancid. And a lot of food. So here's some examples up there that I found that just your Jimmy Dean sausage, all you basically most all your cereals, although. Kellogg's and General Mills tends to be not using them anymore. I've noticed some of their products, they have taken it out and substituting it with vitamin E. You just have to read the labels, okay? That's why I put that list on in front of you. That was done three years ago, the Super Walmart OK list in North Carolina. So I'm not sure if everything's accessible here. Like for instance, in North Carolina, the Moms, Mom's Best brand was accessible at Walmart. Here, you cannot get it. You cannot get that. And that was Nat Mom's natural brand, and it wasn't organic, but it had no additives and preservatives and things like that. And it was okay from that standpoint, but that you can't get it here in Wichita. So call Walmart up and have them order it. That's on my list of things to do. All right, completely avoidable. Just change your brands of foods. Even at Walmart, you can avoid most of these. You just have to know what it's in. All right, I got so frustrated with people, my patients telling me they couldn't avoid food additives because it was too expensive and you couldn't get it at Walmart. So that's why I made that list. I spent five hours at Walmart one day reading the labels of every single thing in that store. Okay, basically, people were like, what the heck is she doing? So. So basically, like Cascadian Farms, which is really good, that brand doesn't use it, Kashi doesn't use it. Kashi, not the best thing for diabetics, but it's additive free, okay? So they all have their pros and cons. Read your labels. It's in puppy chow too, so take care of your animals, okay? All right, propyl gallate, another preservative for fats, linked to cancer, completely avoidable, just avoid it, okay? Buy the brand, buy the oils that are in the darker containers that don't have these additives in them. Okay, I think for the most part, a lot of companies don't use it anymore. Just read the label and avoid this one. All right, the ever famous monosodium glutamate, otherwise known as? MSG. All right, great, you all get an A. So, MSG, Chinese food, right? That's what everyone thinks of. So yes, it is in a lot of oriental foods. And I'll, and I'll briefly, this is kind of interesting, I'll tell you a little bit. Does anyone know the history of MSG? Know anything about it? All right, so the reason the Orientals get a bad blame for it is because MSG is, is actually, the thing that it's doing is it's the free glutamic acid in it, okay? And free glutamic acid kind of tells your brain, ooh, I like this food, this is good, right? But it, it, it is free free occurring in some foods, okay? And seaweed is one of them. However, seaweed also has compounds in it. This is, this is the case for most natural substances that will offset that toxic part of the glutamic acid, okay? That goes for all herbs. Anytime you extract one thing of a plant and put it, and there's so many other things in the plant that they work synergistically together, that's not a good thing, never a good thing. So anyway, they found out that it was the, uh, the MSG in the seaweed that was helping with the flavor of the food, okay? So they started using it during World War II for the, the rations for the military or something like that. I don't know the full story, but this is kind of it. And then they were able to, they learned how to extract it from the seaweed. So they started using it in high doses. And later, so this, this came over to the States, and they were using it in the 50s. And later, we learned how to make it in a lab. Okay, even better, right? You can make it in a lab. We don't even have to extract it anymore. So what they did then was they, in the, I think it was in the 60s, they started marketing MSG, the company who made it, to food companies. And the way they marketed was like, we're gonna get your consumer addicted to your food, basically. Okay, and that's what it is. It's a flavor enhancer. It, it makes it taste better to you. So they don't have, you know, so it's, it's basically in a lot of flavored foods. So potato chips, it's in, because people tell me, oh, I don't eat MSG, I don't eat MSG. MSG is all over the grocery store. People don't even know it's in the grocery store. So Lay's plain potato chips, okay, doesn't have it. 
Any flavored is going to have it, okay? You know, just have a baked potato and barbecue sauce. You, you put barbecue on, there are going to be a lot of chemicals in there. You know, that's just kind of a given, really. It's in, I could not find a ranch dressing at Walmart that did not have it, okay? So all your brands of ranch have it. Newman's Own is a good, you'll see that on the list, good company without additives. I can never find ranch for them. So I don't know. It's in your dry packets, too that you make ranch dip with, the dry stuff, it's all in that. It's in your taco seasonings, okay? You know how Taco Bell was in the news not long ago about how their food was like all these chemicals or something, the meat? Even if you use that, those Taco Bell things, it's, good, it's the same thing at home. So just use chili powder and salt, okay? This goes a long way, and that's much less expensive too, okay? So now all the food companies know we don't like MSG and no one's going to buy their product if it has MSG in it. So we know it's just the free glutamic acid. So they've used other words instead of MSG on labels now. So if you see the word hydrolyzed soy protein, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, hydrolyzed anything, it contains free glutamic acid. Not the best thing to take, especially if you're sensitive to MSG. You will be sensitive to that. And I have a picture of soy sauce because most soy sauce is hydrolyzed soy protein. You have to read the label and have, get the ones that say soybeans on it, okay? And some, and some of those anyway, like tamari, will have a little bit of free glutamic acid, but much less than the hydrolyzed soy protein, okay? It's even in, they used to put MSG and baby formula, and that was taken out. But now it's in the new pre-digested baby formulas because it's hydrolyzed whey protein. And it's for babies that are allergic to the cow's milk. So they give them the pre-digested, but it's still a lot of free glutamic acid, which can be pretty toxic to a child. So just breastfeed for at least six, first six months is what I tell people, you know, do your best. Um, this is linked to nerve cell damage, anything nervous system related, okay? Glutamic acid binds to nerve, nerve cells and binds in your brain and it's, so hydrolyzed protein, autolyzed yeast, that's a common ingredient and that's all, actually all over Whole Foods too and I'm talking to the corporate Whole Foods, that's all over the United States, it's not here. I don't mean the Whole Foods here in Wichita, it's a different store. I haven't been there yet, I don't know. But autolyzed yeast is the same thing as well as one I didn't put in there that you might wanna write down, sodium caseinate. Okay, that's basically a whey casein, sodium caseinase hydrolyzed, basically hydrolyzed whey protein. So that has a lot of free glutamic acid as well. So I have the picture of the Progresso on there because most soups in the grocery store do have some form of free glutamic acid. And on the label it says no MSG added. No monosodium glutamate was added. Yeah, no MS, monosodium glutamate, but there is free glutamic acid in the product. Okay. All right, oh, one more point, the last bullet on that slide, you'll see two words, disodium guanolate and disodium inosinate, and those are two compounds that are readily used in foods. Well, it's, it works, those two work with MSG. They work together with MSG. No company would use it unless there was free glutamic acid in there. It's a very expensive compound, and you would, if you see that on the label, you know there's free glutamic acid in there, okay? So you bet, you bet it, all right? So if you see that, avoid. Go, go, well, you'll be surprised when you go home and read all your spices and stuff, and it's in a lot of foods, okay? Everyone says, oh, I don't eat that. Like, oh, yeah, you do probably do. <laughs> let me see. Let me go, get in your kitchen. All right, partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Everyone knows what that is, right? Right, trans fats, all right? So this is considered an additive. And so what, what they've done, does everyone know what trans fats are? Want me to explain it? All right, I'll explain it, I'll explain it anyway. So what, they've, what we've done is, you know, vegetable oil is liquid at room temperature, right? And butter is solid at room temperature. But we can't use butter in a lot of things because it'll go bad very quickly in a lot of processed foods. So we've added hydrogen to vegetable oil, so term, hence the term hydrogenated, hydrogen added to these vegetable oils, and the hydro, adding the hydrogen makes it solid at room temperature, so which is margarine, right? Margarine is solid at room temperature. <clears throat> the problem with these fats is that they're basically, in, in a nutshell, they're shaped differently than regular fats, okay? So when they're incorporated into the cell, they can have a lot of problems with 
the function of the cell because it can change the shape of the cell and make receptors not work properly. Also, the newest stuff I've been reading is that the body sees these as foreign and when you ingest them and they get into your bloodstream, basically your monocytes, which are your immune system, one of your immune system cells will attack them and cause what they call foam cells. And actually foam cells are what is found at the site of you know, build up plaque. It's mainly at the base of it's a foam cell. So one of the treatments of heart disease and diabetes and things is avoiding these 100% and it is completely doable, okay? So peanut butter has it by natural brand. Never, never, never trust a marketer. Marketing, <laughs> sorry Penny, you're ahead of marketing. <laughs> You know, it's don't, and don't get your information from marketing either, which is where a lot of people get their health information, right? Which is why a lot of people eat high grains for fiber, right? Because we think there's a whole lot of fiber in grains, which there is, but that's another talk for another day. But basically, they're, they're talking about that because processed food and they, they, don't, they don't market fruits and vegetables and things, right? So, so yes, that is true. If they have less than... If they, yeah, read the ingredient list. If it says zero, still read the ingredient list for partially hydrogenated anything, whatever oil it is. Because if it's less than 0.5 grams per serving, technically they can say that there's none in there. Same thing with like, I didn't put this on there, but like Pam and spray butters and stuff. You know, it's like one third of a second you got five calories. You're probably eating more calories than you would if you just took a little butter off of the thing, okay? And you're also getting a lot of propellant and other chemicals in that. So I would avoid all that. Get olive oil and put it in a spray bottle. It's the best thing you can do. Anyway, that's, it's hard to get off topic here. But yes, natural peanut butter, okay? So Smuckers has a brand. They basically all have a natural brand now, except like Jif and Peter Pan and Skippy put sugar in it. So I say get the ones without sugar, okay? So Smuckers is my favorite that you can get at Walmart. I think it tastes good. Even Target brand has one now, and it's $1.99 for a jar. I know the cost of everything too, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I was a really poor meth student for a long time. What about the newer, they say natural peanut butter, but it's, it's got other oils in there. They don't say they're hydrogenated, but they'll put like palm seed oil in there. So they're adding it's, oils. It stabilizes better, but you know. I, I'd say less ingredients, the better. Peanuts, that's it, or peanuts and salt, right. basically, is stick to it. I wouldn't, I mean, sometimes they'll add more oil to it, but. And, and in general, you have to refrigerate those to preserve them. I don't, but we go through them. We go through a jar in like three days. So uh, almond butter, peanut butter. Well, I have a triathlete husband, so he, we eat a jar like a day almost. So, and kids love it too. So apple and peanut butter is one of my favorite things. Okay. All right. So you can read all that. You know, they say no more than two grams of trans fats per day. I say try to get zero in. But I think you're... I'm not quite so sure, but I think your body makes a certain amount or, or something from fats in general, but I'm not so sure about that. It's in coffee creamer, like country, also oh, one big one that, what is the, oh, I can't believe it's not butter. It says no trans fats on it. There is trans fats in it. That's an example of the marketing. It says zero, but there is trans fats, and you can't believe it's not butter, okay? And it's in, you know, what are those things, Twinkies? What is that? I don't know, ding dongs? What do they call those things? Swiss rolls, that's it. All, uh, one thing I wanted to say about MSG, sorry to go back, but I think this might be important, is that the government has called the, has made the, what they call the GRAS list, the G-R-A-S list, and that's the generally recognized as safe list, and MSG was grandfathered into that list. And no exclusive testing has been done on monosodium glutamate. So <clears throat> there's some other things that have been grandfathered in on that list too. So you can get on the internet and find all kinds of stuff. You can get everything on the internet. But you can read up on that. That's your homework. All right, this is very interesting. Most people probably didn't know this. This is aspartame. I mean, everyone knows about uh, aspartame. That's your blue packets, blue stuff, they call it, right? Nutrisy <coughs> equal. Most people don't know that this was actually an anti-ulcer medication. It was actually formulated as an anti-ulcer medication. But when the chemist, the formulator or whatever, was making it, and he actually licked his hand and noticed it was sweet. And the company was like, hmm, multi-billion dollar industry or hmm, million dollar industry. So they marketed as a, as a, food, as a artificial sweetener instead of an anti-ulcer drug. 
So that's actually where it came from. Okay, it, they were not trying to make an artificial sweetener at the time. So this is found in basically your diet drinks, your diet foods, which I tell people avoid diet anything. Okay, not good. All right, it'll make you gain weight. Okay. These are all the foods that it's in. I've been seeing a whole lot of these little fancy crystal light packets lately. Everyone carries those around. You know, it's in those Activia light. Okay. Just get plain yogurt. You know, Dan and I have, I, back to my list, I listed a lot of things for you. Dan and All Natural, Yo Baby, that's what I eat. Greek yogurt, Yo Baby is so good. Those poor ba those babies get fed well. This is, speaking of babies, well, first off, let me t tell you what aspartame is. It's, this is where you need to make a correction on your PowerPoint, where I kind of, I don't know, I must have been sleeping when I did that. But aspartame is two amino acids, as, as, two amino acids, aspartate and phenylalanine, not glutamate. I think I had MSG still in my brain. But it's, it's phenylalanine. It's not that important. And methanol. Everybody know what methanol is? Methanol, methanol, breaks down to what in the body? Formaldehyde, formaldehyde, breaks down to formaldehyde in the body. So you hear formaldehyde, you think, ooh, cadaver, I think, I think cadaver lab. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> that's the first thing that comes to my mind. But formaldehyde is actually all over everywhere, believe it or not. It's all over new clothes, that's why you should always wash your clothes when you get new clothes. Wood is preserved a lot of times with formaldehyde. That's why you tend to see a lot of Parkinson's and things like that in woodworkers, people that are around new wood and building furniture. So that's not a good, a good thing. And asper aspartic acid is an excitotoxin, so it excites the nerves. Ah, it excites them. It allow, well, how it does it, it binds to the cell and adds a lot of calcium into the, into the cell, and if it gets too much, the nerve cell can die. That's why the high ingestion of this and chronic ingestion of this is related to nervous system disorders, okay? And let's see. Do not give this to infants and children. If you have your grand, I mean, share this with your kids, who, your grandkids or whoever. Do not give it to infants and children. It's extremely toxic to them because <clears throat> mainly we have what's called the blood-brain barrier that kind of helps protect our brain from some toxins, which is... Not all parts of the brain, most parts of the brain, but it's not fully formed in infants and small children, okay? So, and unfortunately, they eat a lot of this stuff, which I think is linked to a lot of the nerve, nerve problems in kids. But the government, they have said that a child should not have more than 10 milligrams per kilogram of body weight a day in aspartame. But um, a 17 kilogram child, two-year-old, so that's how many pounds? 30-something 30 pound child who drinks one Diet Coke is getting 17 milligrams per kilogram there, which is over almost double what they consider toxic for a two-year-old. So that's in one Diet Coke. So yeah, no more Diet Cokes. Just give the child water. <laughs> I'd rather have them drink Coke, okay? Coke has other things in there too, but I didn't talk. I see I could sit here all day and talk about these things. The caramel color is a big one that's in the news these days, but... I didn't, I didn't write much about that one. All right, so we talked about infants and children. And so this, again, not to, like I said, I'm not trying to scare people, but I just want to give you the information. These are some of the disorders that are linked to aspartame, okay? And you have all those on your list there. But basically, a lot of nervous system disorders. I think it might be, well, I won't talk about that. So why don't we hear about these things? Okay, politics one of the big things, but also you're not going to hear about this in the news. People get their, you know, they're not going to talk about, uh, you know, the, the things where somebody had a migraine due to aspartame in the news or anything. And it's really hard to prove long-term use and brain cell damage and what's causing it, okay? So it's really hard to prove these things. So you don't, you don't hear much about it. And basically politics, I think, but. All right, number seven. Okay, I got to, we're running out of time here. So a sulfamine K or a sulfamine potassium, K stands for potassium, right? And it's just, it's a relatively new artificial sweetener. It's in a lot of yogurts. Your Danon Light and Fit, and the aspartame is in that one as well. That's your Coke Zero. If you ever were wondering, what's the difference between Diet Coke and Coke Zero? It's just the different artificial sweetener. And now they have Diet Coke with Splenda, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But 
avoid it completely, okay? Just, just general concern, it hasn't been tested, and it may cause cancer in rats that we've seen, so it's completely avoidable, so just avoid it, because I said so, okay? All right, food colorings. So these are all synthetic food colorings that I'm gonna talk about. Blue number one, number two, number, red number two, which is citrus red, which is actually injected into some oranges. You probably didn't know that. Um, red number three and red number 40, and there's more. We'll just talk about these real quick. So I just kind of link, put what these different colorings have done to rats, okay, when we dose them up with them. So blue number one is kidney tumors. You know, these are in, gosh, these are in everything. I just put some examples, but gummy worms, M&Ms, light and fit, blueberry yogurt. It's no, well, I think they do put blueberries in it now. But there is blue number two. There one yogurt, I think it was one store brand I saw one day. There was no hand of blueberries in it. There were like little chemicals to make it feel like blueberries. Uh, Tylenol. Why they put red dye in infant Tylenol is beyond me. I don't understand it. Infant really does not care what color. And they probably don't care what it tastes like either because they've probably only been drinking breast milk. It's probably very uh, kind of alarming to the child to have cherry flavored Tylenol, you know, but... You know, that's, that's adults thinking the child needs cherry flavor. So it's in Gatorade and Kool-Aid and pet food. Why they color pet food, I have no idea. But it's in pet food. So Nutri-Grain bars, people think those are really healthy. They're full of additives. You know, it's in the little red filling in the middle. They're in cosmetics. A big, big culprit is medications. And I'm not sure, Dr. Ron, do you know if you can get medications without dyes in them? You can, you can get them compounded. So you can get medication. The reason they're dyed is so that people don't mix them up because people are on like 50 meds sometimes, you know, so, that, which can be important. You don't want to mix things up. But it's in, it's in a whole lot of things. It's in topicals too. Think deodorant, you know, yellow, I found yellow number, no, green number three in my husband's degree deodorant. So it's in that. We, we do, like, we test for, I, don't, I didn't think I mentioned that, we test for a lot of these additives on our cytotoxic test to see if you're reacting to it from an immune standpoint, which can be helpful to you. But in general, even if you're not reacting to it from an immune standpoint, I'd say avoid all of these regardless. So again, I'm very intense and passionate about avoiding these things. All right, fast green. Yellow number five and yellow number six, especially if you have kids or you're going to have kids or whatever, avoid these 100%, please, if anything. Uh, tar tartrazine is the biggest one, okay, related to a lot of severe allergic reactions, hives, chronic hives, chronic asthma, ADHD, big time related to it, okay, and it's in a lot, a lot of kid foods, okay, mac and cheese, Captain Crunch. For some reason, kids eat a lot of yellow foods. Don't really, I, I don't know. I don't know why, but they don't like my colorful fruits and vegetables, but they'll eat Captain Crunch, which really looks <laughs> disgusting to me. But <clears throat> it's in vitamins, one-a-days, things like that. They're all yellow, right? It's in those. Might be in a minute amount, but you're taking it every day, so avoid it, okay? Mountain Dew, Gatorade. Now I think Gatorade's making Gatorade clear. Like Cliff has their brand, Cliff Bar, that's, like I said, they make the label the whole bottle, that color. So they don't have to make it green. They just make the whole, lab the whole bottle green. So you think it's green. Because you're not going to drink lime Gatorade unless it's green, right? Okay. So, so read, read those. Those are big time no-nos. Okay. And it's in a lot of cosmetics, too. All right. Alestra, right? The big wow chips. They deplete your fat-soluble vitamins. So this is an artificial fat that's not absorbed. People think it's out of the grocery stores, but that's actually what the light chips are. They're um, Alestra, a lean brand. <clears throat> the reason they don't have to put, they, they may decrease your fat-soluble vitamins is because what, what have they done? They've added the fat-soluble vitamins to the chip now. But the, rea but the thing is, you know, if any smart person, you're probably sitting there like, well, if it decreases your absorption of the fats in your food, so if you ate those chips with you know, a, a sandwich and some carrots, you're not going to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins. So you think you're going to absorb the vitamins in the chip that they added? Probably not, but they've done it to make people feel better. I don't know, maybe they're just stupid and aren't, you know, apparently they are. So number 10, okay, we'll get through this. Potassium bromate, this is a biggie. It's in a lot of breads. Not so much anymore, OK? 
Okay, this is one that California has put on their labels, does cause cancer if the company decides to use it. So I listed some companies that don't use it anymore that used to. So Pillsbury, Pepperidge Farm, those companies. What it does is it changes the texture of the food. So it changes the, I mean the bread, the, the crumb. So it doesn't crumble, okay? It just changes, like, like you probably really care, but. Have you never noticed like some fast food buns are different? They, they, they're, that's because they put potassium bromide in it. Wendy's, Arby's still uses them. So I put, that's why I put Wendy's up there. And I don't know if McDonald's does, Burger King does, Boston Market will use it in some of their breads. So that is one that you want to avoid, okay? Uh, bromate, well, I probably, I don't want to wait. Well, bromate turns into bromide, which is, if you have ever seen a periodic table, did you all take chemistry? I don't know. But it's on the right side of that table, all this, what they call halogens, with uh, fluoride and chloride and iodide. And really it can affect the thyroid too because it is a, a halogen and iodide is used to make thyroid, so it can cause thyroid problems, all kind of stuff. So really read the labels. Again, most companies don't use it, but fast food places still do. That's why fast food is bad. It's not that burgers are bad, they're not. It's just that the chemicals they use in their food. They also hydrogenate their oils when they fry their fries. So it, it makes the oil last longer. White sugar, high fructose corn syrup, Again, <clears throat> you want to avoid these additives as much as possible. We're not meant to eat sugar. We're not really meant to eat a lot of cane sugar. Unfortunately, it's in a lot of our foods. A lot of people's tongues are so just used to high, high sugar and high, high salt, they don't taste other foods. And a lot of times I try to tell people, you get all these additives, you're going to start tasting foods better. And they don't believe me, but then they come back a month later and they say, oh, you were right. We've actually had people on the HCG program, I don't know if you guys know about that, but say that too, because basically on that program, you're taking out all additives, you cannot eat any. It's you know, low calorie, but it's all nutrient dense foods. And people will come back saying, oh, wow, you know, cucumbers never tasted so good. And, and it does, you, you can change your palate. All right, so you shouldn't be getting more than 10% of sugar in your diet a day from added sugars, okay? But we're getting upwards of 30 and 40%, okay? They're in our vitamins, they're in, they're just in everything, okay? High fructose corn syrup, it's big, it's cheap, that's why it's used. And fructose is more sweeter than sugar, so they use it more readily in a lot of, in a lot of products. It's in your Coke, it's in, it's in a lot of things. And I, I, to be honest, I don't know too much. I, need, I would like to learn more. Maybe I'll do a talk on this some other day. But glucose and fructose act differently in the brain, apparently. So fructose will cause more of a food addiction, like you want to eat more, and glucose doesn't. And you need some fructose, but we're getting way too much fructose in our diets than what we need. We should be just getting it from fruit. Fructose is a natural sugar in fruit, okay? You don't want concentrated corn syrup all the time. All right, and that's what people are getting most of their sugar from is corn syrup. All right, so I just put a little bar here to show you the relative sweetness of sugars, a, um, a bar graph, the relative sweeteners of sugars and, and, and sweeteners. And you can see fructose is much sweeter than, than sucrose and all the other ones, okay? Lactose is actually a dairy sugar. So that's just a visual for you guys. Benzoates, number 12, that is sodium benzoate. The biggest problem with this, it's a preservative and it's used in a lot of liquids, jams, vinegars, things like that. A lot of energy drinks. The main issue with benzoates, who took organic chemistry? Just me? Oh, Dr. Ron? So you all know how to write the, the benzene structure, right? Yeah, you memorize that. Even if it was 50 years ago, you probably remember benzene because you have to write it for everything. But sodium benzoate, combined with vitamin C will make benzene in the body, body which is pretty toxic. Um, the main source of benzene, has your parents ever told you not to stand in front of the car exhaust fumes? Or, I don't know, you tell your kids that? Did you ever wonder why? It's mainly it's benzene's in car exhaust fumes, it's in the air. Don't ingest it, okay, especially with vitamin C. So if you're taking these things, like I put this, a lot of these drinks will have sodium benzoate. Pick the one without sodium benzoate in it as a preservative, okay, all right? Using a lot of energy drinks. There's one energy drink that doesn't use it. I want to say it's vitamin water's energy drink. I don't remember, but one of those. Energy drinks, you don't need that anyway. Just drink water. Sulfur dioxide sulfites, okay? Sulfites are in a lot of foods. These are the main culprits. Wine, 
shrimp, and dried fruit. So when it comes to dried fruit, if you're trying to avoid sulfites, just buy organic. Even if it doesn't say it on the label, the grapes were treated with sulfites. Okay? The raisins weren't, so they don't legally have to put it on the label. But you will see it on the label in bagged dried fruit and trail mix because they actually put it, add it to it, because I think the bag causes more air or something, I don't know. So <clears throat> it depletes thiamine, which is B1 in foods, okay? So sulfites will decrease the vitamin content of the food. Shrimp, it's really hard to find shrimp without sulfites because even down in Louisiana where I'm from, the, boat, the shrimpers will spray sulfites on the food like after it comes right out of the ocean. They spray them to retain the color, okay? So even if you get it right off the boat like we do down there, uh, you you um, still getting sulfites. So, all right. It's in dried fruits. I said that. And wine. It's in it's in a, a bunch of other stuff. But it's sulfur dioxide. You'll see. Yeah. What, what's the one in this one? Sodium metabisulfite. So if you see sulfite in any form, this is it's sulf, You know, in any metabisulfite, whatever, it's a sulfite. Okay. All right. Splenda. This is, this is the last one. Okay. And then and then we'll I'll read a label to you. But Splenda. Okay, it doesn't, I didn't say this, but aspartame and the other ones will increase insulin levels, and that's why they're really bad for diabetics, okay? Hopefully, the American Di Diabetic Association will finally wake up, and they're usually 15 years behind anyway. So, it doesn't do those things. It doesn't cause a boost of insulin or cause cravings, not that we know of, but it is what it is, and it is natural. It's from sugar, like they say, and, but it's sugar with a chlorine attached, okay? Or, and chlorine will, when it's, when it's, it's cleaved by the body. It kind of it makes a chloride free radical in the body, and you don't want to have chloride floating through your bloodstream. Okay, it can have detrimental effects on thyroid, liver, and kidneys. These are some of the things that have Splenda in them. It's sucralose. Okay, sucralose. It is made from sugar cane. Okay, my family will not get money from me because they're sugar. Some of them are sugar cane farmers and own sugar cane. So, but they get mad at me because I say don't eat Splenda. Uh, stevia is the best one at this time to use if you're going to use a sweetener alternative. It is a plant. Again, Truvia, like I said before, never to eat something that has something extracted from the plant. Truvia is just the sweet part of stevia. They've extracted it, and Coca-Cola is actually made by Coca-Cola Company, and, and they have extracted the sweet part of the stevia plant and made it into Truvia. So, so get stevia. Get stevia. The whole plant, okay? There's other parts of stevia that have been shown to be anti-cancer and other things. So just always have the whole plant if you do anything. Don't use the concentrated little molecule, okay? That is the end of the talk. And I just, I had some, some samples. We don't have time anyway. I didn't think we would. But I just want to read this one label to you, okay? And, and we're going to count how many of the additives we talked to today are in this. This is Great Value Veggie Baked Crisp Snacks, all right? Enriched flour, so that means enriched means it's been uh, refined and all the vitamins have been fortified into it. So it's been enriched, which you think sounds good, but it's not necessarily. Sunflower oil, canola oil, cornstarch, modified potato starch, dehydrated veg vegetable and seasoning blend, you know, carrots, onions, dextrose, salt, celery, cornstarch, red bell pepper, tomatoes, autolyzed yeast extract, calcium silicate, which is anti-caking agent, sugar, corn syrup, natural flavor, which has autolyzed yeast in it as well, tapioca, dextrin, modified cornstarch, garlic powder, gum, arabic, malic acid, vinegar solids, silicon dioxide, monocalcium phosphate, sodium bicarb, soy lecithin salt, malt, and sodium metabisulfite. All right. So anyway, and here's one that is decent. There's a cracker that doesn't have a lot of additives in it. Okay, this is from people who work here. I've never tied these before, though. Enriched flour, not the best. Oh, what else does it contain? <coughs> Canola oil, corn oil, palm oil, salt, sodium bicarb, wheat gluten, malted barley flour, yeast. So better option than this one. But anyhow, any questions? Xylitol. Xylitol. Xylitol, as of now, I think would, is okay. Zyl sugar alcohols can cause a lot of gastro intolerance problems with people. Xylitol, not as much as some of the other ones, but I would say xylitol would be fine. Yes. Corn, it? Yes, it does That's come from corn. corn. Yeah. So if you're allergic to corn, you got to watch that too. And a lot of vitamin C is taken from corn too. So if you have a problem with corn, you you got to look at that as well. Yes. Okay, you talk about the partially hydrogenated fats. 
fats being trans fat. What about just hydrogenated fats? I would avoid fats. hydrogenated. Is that also trans fat? I would avoid hydrogenated. I mean, fully hydrogenated as well. Yes. But is that considered trans? Fat? I don't think it's con Dr. Ron. Do you, I don't think it's considered it. Okay, no. So it's not good. For you. It's, it's not good for you. Yeah. But I would avoid those as well. Oh, yeah, yes. I, I tried to, but I was thinking they were both trans fat. So I hope you guys find that other handout helpful. I used to give it to all my patients. One day I'll make it a little more professional and kind of revamp it. And, but I'm sure there are more brands out there now. And I know Walmart has added more things. And even like companies like the Wheat Thins used to put trans fats in theirs, and they don't anymore. So companies are, are always changing their ingredients. So just, just read the labels. Mm -hmm.